If you're bad at math, I have good news. Today, you're gonna discover the mistakes you're likely making. If you fix these three study habits, you will be wondering why you ever thought math was hard in the first place. How do I know that? In sixth grade, I was the most clueless person in my math class. But after I fixed those study mistakes, by the time I got to high school, I got fives on both AP Stats and AP Calc BC my sophomore year. Woo! More importantly, I've been a private math tutor for almost 10 years, and I see students doing the exact same bad habits when they do their homework and study math. Targeting those mistakes worked like magic. Two of my students couldn't crack 25 out of 36 on the ACT math section, but after I tutored them, whoop, math became their easiest section, getting them both an overall score of 33. You ready to ace math with the A team? Let's go. Consider a math problem in front of you. Okay, you don't know what to do, so you pull up a sample problem. Now, all you do is replicate each step of that example into your own problem just like copying a page of notes word for word. Boom, it's solved. Great, right? No, the textbook or teacher gave you a fish, but you still have no idea how to fish because you are just going through the motions. Don't worry, it's not just you and it's not your fault. My students told me how their math teachers just write a bunch of stuff on the board. The teacher sits back and tells them to blindly copy it. Then when the students ask how or why, the teacher just goes, it's not important. That's not really your concern. Or doesn't seem to even get it themselves. No wonder that then, when I give my students a slightly different problem, they couldn't solve it anymore. And maybe that's your exact issue too. You can do your homework, but then when the test comes around, it's like a foreign language, even though you're technically supposed to know everything on that test. The issue is that not only are you being a passive solver, but you might not even know what terms are called. You might say, for example, X with a little three on top instead of X cubed. All of these little things are really important to turn you into an active solver. So here's the fix. For each solution, do two things. As you're writing it out, number one, be able to state each step. Say, for example, first I combine like terms. Next, I square both sides. Finally, I add three to both sides. Even better, number two, with each step you do, say why you are doing it. Like, I square both sides because this gets rid of the ugly square root. This example might sound obvious, but I'm just giving a trivial example because I can't be out here spitting derivatives. Just adapt it to whatever math class you're in. Here's the problem though. Even if you say it in your head, there's no telling if you truly understand it. That's the power of the Feynman technique, when you explain a concept or solution to someone to make them able to understand it. And as you're explaining it, you will see your knowledge gaps. If you can't find someone to vocalize your solution with, a hack is to film yourself explaining it, watch it back, and iterate. This also has some bonus benefits. Transition. Have you ever felt lost in math class? Maybe learning new concepts feels harder and harder, or maybe you miss points from silly errors. That's because you are neglecting fundamentals. These should be like knowing how to walk. You can't run, sprint, jump over hurdles if you can't even walk. Fixing this bad habit will solve both of those problems and more. I've seen so, so many kids understand and was canned. I've seen so many students be able to do high school level math operations, but then they screw up the easiest step of the problem because they didn't know the order of operations. And then guess what? They missed the points of the entire problem. What a shame is that? They get problems wrong because they couldn't divide fractions, not because they can't do algebra. So next time you have difficulty with a math concept or problem, break down every step and every term and study each piece of the puzzle Make sure you understand it fully before putting it all back together. Like, what does a fraction really even mean? What does the concept of foiling even do? How can I apply it to other places? When I multiply x to the third times x squared, why can I just add those exponents together? And another, when you have an inequality and you change the signs on both sides, why do you flip that less than or greater than sign? These are all so essential. Transition. Thanks so much to my editors. Shout out Jacob and Sarah for helping me make these videos possible. If you like my editors and to show them thank you for making it possible for me to continue helping you on YouTube, then please drop a like and comment. Thank you, Jacob and Sarah. Jacob with a K. You're so smart. 
I know you're so smart, so why are you selling yourself short? You don't have to be a genius to be good at math because I certainly wasn't. Like I said in this video, if I was actually a genius with a top 1% IQ, then to be honest, I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. I would be doing rocket science. <laughs> I would have also qualified for USAMO, as many people say in my comments. Has this happened to you? So many times a student will just surrender themselves, holding up that white flag saying, I'm dumb. When then I tell them, just try for five more minutes. I know you know what to do next. And then boom, they literally figure it out all on their own. So please stop giving up. That goes for life as well. When you're pursuing something and it's not working out, who's to say that trying for a few more minutes one more day, taking one extra step will not pay off. That sucks if success was literally on the next step and you just chose not to take it. Here's a fix to improve your math grit. Three steps. One, with each part of the problem, write down everything you know about it. For example, if it's a question asking about this number being even and how do you make it odd or something like that, what do you know about even numbers? I, for example, would write, well, an even number can be written as two n where n is an integer and in contrast i would also remember that an odd number can be written in the form 2m plus 1 where m is an integer i don't know what math level you're at but if you are above elementary school you should probably know what that meant and if you don't well go study up <laughs> number two just do something do a math step that is logical and is a real math step. Like don't make things up. Do something and see if that gets closer to what you want. If not, think about why that didn't get closer to your end goal. What kind of format should your answer look like? How can you get what you know closer to looking like that? Number three, if those both fail, then study a little, read up on the concepts and come back to the problem. Do not give up and just go to the answer key. Because remember, if you just skip to the answer key, you might just be trying to get that fish instead of learning how to fish. Overall, golden mindset part. Ooh, you have to care. The only numbers students care about nowadays is their social media following. How many likes they got on that TikTok. Even if that's not you, what do you care about? If you truly care about something, you would show that you care. If you really want to become a math god, then start caring and showing like you care and care about the numbers and the fundamentals and what math really is. People just want shortcuts and results, but the only people they're cheating is themselves. That's not the way math works. Maybe shortcuts can fly in a lot of humanities classes, but if you try to take shortcuts and you skim through the concepts instead of actually understanding, well, you are not gonna be able to do well on math tests. I guarantee that. That's why even though I'm not a genius, I can solve the math section on the ACT and SAT, each with 10 minutes to spare and get a perfect score. Here's proof. And I actually did this last year when I was like five years out of high school. Math becomes as easy as knowing how to tie your shoelaces. You have to care about your brain putting in quality reps, just like your muscles would at the gym. Damn! Hopefully that was a good flex. The A-team understands things holistically, so this video actually wasn't just all about math. The golden mindset extends to your attitude towards life. This is how you build your determination and problem-solving skills. If you run into a problem in life and your first instinct is to complain or ask for help, my friend, you will probably not fare well in math classes either. But if you're here and you're subscribed, you're part of the A-team and that will all change very soon. You're on the right path. For more advanced tips and building your problem solving skills, you can check out my math channel here, A Plus Math, also linked below. Wait, before you go, can I ask you a favor? If you made it this far, you are probably not one of those silly people who comments under these videos. It's just cause you're Asian. So if you see someone comment that, please help me reply something like, no, you just have no growth mindset <coughs> and you're racist. <laughs> Great job. I hope you learned a little something today and I'll see you next time. I just went to an event in person. I talked to an admissions person. One second. And I had food in my teeth.
Ugh, vlogging is awkward. I haven't done this in a while. Oh, I'm not gonna get in because I will forever be remembered as that girl who spoke with the little black thing right here. Hopefully the admissions person just thought I had a big teeth tooth gap. She was so very nice though, so I hope that she can just think, oh, this is just a real person. Real people make mistakes and get food in their teeth. That doesn't say anything about her professionalism. Ah, anyway, it was insane. So I just got on the New York subway earlier and I look across the cart and two girls get on. I'm like, oh, I know those people. So two of my friends got on the same cart and while the subway was moving, I walked over to them and was like, hey, what are you guys doing? They're like, hey, we're going to this event. Come along. And I'm like, you know what? I would love to. This sounds so fun. I was tempted because the other event ended early. I literally follow them getting ready to transfer to another train all the way to Brooklyn. And I think, wait a minute, I was just slightly stressed by the amount of things I have to do that I haven't been doing because of wedding dress shopping. I'm really not one to turn down these social events. I know it's gonna be a good time. I feel FOMO right now, but I had to make a tough decision and say no this time. I can't go. Even if I don't do real work tonight, I should still rest so I can make my brain refreshed and able to do all the work I have to do. Walking back after rejecting going to the party and leaving my friends feels kind of like, oh, this nagging feeling of what if I went? What if I met someone cool? What if, uh, but you know, you gotta have conviction behind your choices. Unfortunately, I don't have my mic, so sorry. This is a very raw vlog that I haven't done in a while for this mini section of the video. Recently, I've been trying to make these harder decisions of saying no, even though I do prioritize fun, but to save my mental health and energy because life has just been so chaotic lately. This whole week I have been now working and I need to organize my very messy notes that I took at the admissions event. It was on the iCloud notes app on my phone and I was afraid that people were looking at me like, oh, this girl's texting, not paying attention. I'm like, no, I'm just so into this. I'm actually taking notes. So that's another fear I have, these intrusive thoughts and being paranoid. This is the day after that mini vlog, but I realized I forgot to reveal the program, which I promised in the previous mini vlog. So confusing, but the program I'm applying to is drum roll please, HBS, <laughs> it's Harvard Business School. It's for the MBA, but at Harvard, hence why it makes sense because I'm planning to matriculate into an MBA anyway. So 2025 fall, it will be MIT Sloan or Harvard, depending on if I get in. And the logic behind this is Harvard does have a much larger network that I think would be really beneficial for my purposes. Also because I just love getting to know a lot more different people. I also love their case study approach because it's all about learn by doing, which I always advocate for to get the most out of your learnings. I'm really excited, but also nervous because I did get rejected from them before. I didn't even get an interview, which I was honestly surprised about because I think I have a lot of great qualities that they literally ask for, but as we know, the application process is very obscure and it's really a shot in the dark. Like at the event yesterday, the panelists were asked, what do you think was special about you that got you into Harvard? And they basically all said, I have no idea. I just applied on a whim. So it's really hard to say. I realized, you know what? I have nothing to worry about because Either way, I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be a rock star. Even if I don't get into Harvard, it'll be great and fantastic and we would compliment each other so well if I do, but it's not the end of the world. Just like I tell students who are applying to undergrad, don't put too much stress on the program you get into. If you are a top school material, you are gonna be so successful no matter where you go. Anyway, I gotta get to work now, gotta work. Wish me luck applying again to the big hawful. <laughs>